Officially open. Okay. So, um, Clint's going around right now making sure people sign in and stuff. It's just one of our legal requirements that we have to do. Um, as well as one of the annoying ones that we do is that if somebody does stand up and speak, yes. you have to state your name at the beginning, which is always fun when I tell them, hold on, stop, don't say anything, say your name. And they're like, everyone knows me. I'm like, sorry, I have to do it. So um, one of the things is, yeah, we have to uh, sign in. And if you choose to speak, then you must indicate to do so beforehand. If you end up changing your mind and you don't want to speak, then you can choose to pass. So. Um, moving on with that. So, after today, if you've changed your mind and you decide that you do want to submit public comment and something for the board or the district to consider, we have three options. You can email the district. Um, you can turn in your written public comments to the district office. I will have those forms on our website as well. And, um, or you can click the contact us through our website. So those are three different ways. Public hearing rules, same as every single time. Um, you'll be called on to speak in order of the speaker list. Each speaker will have a timed three minutes. Please confine your comments to the subject of the hearing. Um, the six o'clock one is gonna be for the sewer ER inspection rate changes. And then the one at seven is going to be for the water multifamily dwelling. So um, we'll do the first one and then we'll close the hearing and then open the second. Um, we're here to listen to what you have to say about the sewer inspection base rate and multifamily dwelling rate enactment. So the first one I'm going to speak on is the sewer base rate um, inspections and rate change. And the reasons we're doing this is uh, we have consistent operating loss on our sewer system operations. Um, our previous auditor that we're working with right now showed us a five-year comparison on how our sewer system was being subsidized by our water system. Um, and at that point was five years. I think we are now two years that that has been going on. Um, so we've been trying to actively work on this. Um, I think everyone's aware. Um, and then we're also striving to have fair and equitable billing among all customers using the system, which I believe everyone can agree with. Some of the contributing factors, uh, some of this information was talked about during when we adopted our water ordinance, um, and I'm bringing it forward to now because you never know who's forgotten or who didn't hear. So total system capacity established in April of 1988 in the sewer facilities plan is 886 ERs, or sewer connections. The district is legally required to maintain the capacity for the vacant and reserved ERs. We cannot sell additional ERs beyond system capacity, and a sewer moratorium on new connections was placed April 17th of 2007. We need to determine the exact number of ERs currently being used, as well as how many are still reserved and vacant. Um, the only way to do this and still be fair to every customer and connection on the system is to perform an on-site inspection to each account and parcel and make the necessary updates and corrections in billing and tracking of the ERs to date. Sewer connection or ER inspections will address these factors. Everyone pays for the disposal services they use. Everyone pays for the same fee for the same service as set forth in the district rate schedule as well as the ER valuations in our ordinance 21-2. All of this information can be found on our website under the resolutions and ordinance tab. The district will have an up-to-date count of the system capacity and remain in compliance of the original sewer system capacity requirements. Users with increased usage not previously identified to the district will have their ER basis adjusted to actual usage and pay fees accordingly or cease using service if no ER is available. Uh, the district will be required to perform a water rate study for the water improvement project and IRWA, which stands for Idaho Rural Water Association, has agreed to perform a sewer rate study at no additional cost to the district or the rate payers. 
The district wants to resolve inequities before they look at the stability of our existing rates so we can keep user bills low. If we make sure beforehand that everyone is paying their fair share, then they'll know that they don't need to increase it as much as they thought. We've realized um, getting the inequities figured out will keep all the costs low for everyone. So with that being said, the board will now listen to your comments related to the sewer inspection, base rate change, and on-site ER inspections. As I stated at the beginning, it's super annoying. You have to state your name beforehand and then make your comment. And everyone is limited to three minutes per person. Yes. Um, state my name. Yeah. Are you Yeah. Were you all comments? Um, yeah, I believe you are the only one. So yeah, it's you. <laughs> oh, um, can you go back to Cheryl Puckett, um, Bayview, Idaho? Can you go back to number four? You, I, you, it went so fast. I, can I you explain understand. number four to me? Oh. In, in um, easy layman terms. Okay. <laughs> Users with increased usage not previously identified to the district will have their ER basis adjusted to actual usage and pay fees accordingly, or cease using service if no ER is available. So give me an example. What do you? What does it mean? They had water. Or, oh no, this is sewer, not water. Okay, they had sewer. Yep. They weren't identified. In other words, the district didn't know they existed. Is that what it's saying? No, it's oh. stating that. So, um, in the original LID that was created um, in '93, everyone was allotted a certain amount. They pre-bought them, and that paid for the infrastructure. So you can only have that amount to it. In 2007, there was no additional um, moratorium, so that basically became like our Bible for who had what and they couldn't do over. Unfortunately, some new connections were made on each parcel for usually people who had an abundance of ER connections and they figured, oh, okay, I have them, I'm gonna use them, and they connected. Never informing the district, hey, I'm now going to use three more of this or two more of this. And so our billing does not correctly um, reflect what their usage is at this time. So obviously that's a loss for the district and something that we need to get figured out before we go for a rate study. If they're using over the allotment that they have, then they will need to basically tear out infrastructure to fit the ER valuation. So if, let's say for instance, somebody had a trailer park or an RV park, and they originally purchased four of them, but they have six RV pads, they would have to remove those RV pads. Because they only have four? Clients. Yes. Okay. And this says, implies that some people might have hooked up? Or, or yes, to we have a number. Yeah, we have a number of uh, customers who have either used over the allotment or um, they have not informed us of the new connections and ERs that they would they have been using. Right. Now, is this something that um, Cooch can easily identify when he does inspection? Is this something you can see, visually put eyes on with no yeah, problem? We've been this, we've already, you can explain to her also because we've already been doing this. Right. But you can, you can see this. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we go around and we look for the stub outs and connections and underbrush, under rocks, um, under fire pits. I mean, we're... Planters. Very yeah, planters. Very no expense. Um, so my my other question is, could, I don't know if you will speak to it, but could you give an example of let's say Boilers Marina? Can you do that, or you can't do that now? Like their situation, um, what they were currently paying. And can you give it a concrete example? Like they're currently paying three hundred and fifty, but they really should be paying. 550. So people here will understand um, and then explain why those in inequities existed. You know, can you delve into an example? Maybe? Yes. Okay, thank uh, you. I'm not going to do a particular account. Okay, because that's good. Yeah. Just pick anyone. But, explain it. Um, like I, I'll go back to the original example I was using, the RV park. Okay. Um, if they have the number of connections, let's say they purchased those four connections in the beginning, they've always had them, and they're using six, and that says they don't have enough, then the simple fix is to just correct what their billing is, and now they will get paid. That's an easy one. Yes. But what about a float home? Um, well, N number of float homes. It's a, a long time. Because that one is very easy in my head to understand, but yeah. what about a float home? 
Um, as far as ER connections, mm -hmm. yeah, because that's what we're talking about. Yes. Um, I have not come across a situation where a customer is using over their ER allotment for flip homes. Are you sure? I'm sure. I have here, uh, because I got it back uh, January 6, 2021, um, I, I through Freedom of Information. Um, so I'll, I won't say the name of the marina. So I said, I kind of did math, and they're currently paying, okay, then, uh, 377 for sewer. And then my notes, and um, believe me, I am not accurate, Jesse, I know that, should be paying 442 for sewer. Yeah. So, and then I have that with many other marinas. So, and I'm not picking on the marinas. I'm just trying to understand uh, how uh, the examples of, of float homes, like how did it go so, from yes. 377 to 442? Let's just say, because this was Freedom of Information. Yeah. Okay. So their amount that they're being billed might not be correct, but they will. And uh, let me also go back. Okay. Also, everything's a work in progress, but I think where I've gone so far with the commercial accounts which I'm uh, about ready to hold a meeting with the board and present to them all of my facts and findings. Um, but uh, there are some customers who could have gone over what their parcel allotted, but with the new sewer ordinance, we also allowed the ability to transfer ERs. So people have an abundance of ERs that they're able to transfer within reason. They um, can't transfer from across the lake because the infrastructure is not the same from across the lake. Do, do you, if, you uh, if, a, if a marina, yeah, okay, if a marina has 20 float homes, will it be 20 times um, um, sewer is $26 a month? Correct. Is that how it will work? Uh, well, the float home, yeah, is 0.7 value. Oh, that's, so, yeah, that's the tricky part the and the math, right? Yeah. That is the tricky yeah. part. Well, there's, there's one thing about the yards, too. We have to take into consideration the mechanical or the the system that is set up to cover the area that they have. They can't exceed, say, say they've got a, a, a four-inch drain pipe and, and, and they're expecting it to take six inches of, of sewage. And uh, uh, so that is taken into consideration also. Correct. <clears throat> And we would pass everything in front of our engineer to let them know, hey, is this transfer acceptable? Is our infrastructure able to handle this before um, any transfers are granted to the customers? Yeah. Um, so just for the people here to hear this, um, the Corbin building, that's 12 units, they had a $156 sewer um, monthly bill, and they should be paying almost double, 312 Now, how that happened, I, I, I don't get it. I Honestly, I have no idea. Um, it was very easy to identify that when I very first started, but the ordinance did not outline how we could just out and out change that. Um, and it did not outline how we could uh, so require that people remove infrastructure. So are you saying, so in Corbin, there, let's say that building might not have any uh, change in um, value or uh, they might not have any increase in fee? Is that what you're... Oh, they will have an increase. Oh, right. Everyone, each uh, unit will be paying for right. a separate fee. Okay. And, and just so you know, uh, I, because <laughs> yeah, I did it, I forgot about the point seven. I just did it on one. But still, yeah. I'm, I'm off. But um, my point is they were all underpaying. Yes. I did m most of the marinas. Okay, I, I don't have any questions. I really did that for everybody else to hear. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I believe that was all we had for public comments on that one. And unfortunately, we now have 45 minutes until our next public <laughs> hearing starts. Woohoo! <laughs> so, Can we um, ask questions? Yeah, I'm totally available for questions. Okay. Um, Back in number one or whatever, it said the original ERs were 89 or whatever the number is. Yeah, 86. 86. 86. So how many of those are being used currently? Um, that's one thing that we're finding out right now. As we go through and change everyone's uh, billing to correct amounts, then we will have a current up-to-date spreadsheet that I've been working on. Um, and all that information is being put in. And so then we're going by big accounts first and then going by other sections and groups. And then I will literally... Bob and I will be going block by block around the town and making sure that 
we have counted every ER. Mm -hmm. um, and then following up with letters to customers and situations like that. And then we'll have a final count. Yes, okay. I have a question. Um, I just don't understand how you have people with ERs that didn't have, that, that didn't pay. Or number four, it says users with increased usage, not privately identified, will have their ER basis adjusted. So were they, did they have accounts and they just weren't paying enough? Is that what? Yeah, they have accounts and some people have built shops on the property um, oh. and put another dwelling above and renting it out or they were being billed for three RV pads because they had that amount at the time but since have put in five but nobody called the district and said anything. And yeah. So you're really going to be charging them from today forward, not correct. back? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Yeah. Um, so somebody in town that has Say they have two lots and they have one sewer and water ER. How many RVs can they put on the lot? Um, that depends on if they have a dwelling there already. No dwelling. Um, if it's just an RV pad and it's there full time, then it's a 0 .7 value and we don't have anything else that they could put on the infrastructure that would get them up to that one. There's nothing valued at a 0 .3, so it would just be one, e, uh, one RV. Okay. Um, can you ask people to say their name when they're... They talk? I guess I've just gotten to a question and answer oh. period now because we have so much time. I okay. did the official public comment and now All right. it's time to fill and I just want to accommodate. Uh, what's your name? Randy Henderson. Thank you. Oh, Randy, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't recognize you. And my name's Allie. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have another question. So in this process, so should we be... Like, I have two lots that has an ER, and I actually have a tank and a meter, but they've never been used. So is somebody going to see that, or do I have to volunteer that I have that, because I don't want that my ER to be missed, or to say somebody to say that I don't have an ER there? Yeah. Um, well, and we will start with the letter out to you, letting know, you know that we'll be at the property. And basically, the letter is going to be in the form of, you know, I don't think that if... Do you want me to stop? Sorry, no, I'm talking. Are you, do, okay. Um, that if um, somebody doesn't come forth with information about uh, maybe, because I'm not going inside people's houses. Right, right, right. Um, but it would be up to them to give the information that they are using a rental from downstairs. Um, and if later on it's found out that they have that rental and they're not authorized to do it, there are fines and penalties that come along with that. I don't know what they are offhand, but I know that they're outlined in the sewer ordinance. So if you're curious, that is on our website. So we're going to get a letter that says you're going to be in our neighborhood on a certain date or something? <coughs> yes. Oh, okay. Probably a week time frame. Okay. Um, I'm always surprised with how much time some of these can take. <laughs> okay. But I, in a perfect world, would like to really get this done um, before the snow flies. I don't want it. I don't want it to stretch over to another season. I think the fair and equitable thing for all customers involved is to have this done before the snow comes. So Jackie Beaudry, mm -hmm. and I, and when you say an ER, does that mean a septic tank and a water connection? Is that an ER? Just a sewer connection. So an okay. ER is it stands for equivalent residential unit, and that's um, how they measure. Um, the use of the sewer. Okay. And so, so if we have one house and it's got sewer, mm -hmm. and on another lot we have a shop but it has no sewer, we're in compliance. You yes. are in compliance. Okay. But you couldn't turn the shop into an apartment we, yeah. or put a toilet in, then you would we, be out. We, caught, we, we um, had our daughter staying with us and we do have three lots and we wanted to put a tiny home on part of it. Right. And um, I found out that I can't get an ER for because my dad didn't buy them when they were offered. Yeah. Right. That you're correct. Hi. Um, so just everyone will get a letter at the same time. No, everyone at groups. Because if I were to send out one big mass letter and people were sitting around waiting, I'd be having phone calls. When are you yeah. coming? Where are you going to be? <laughs> so this way I can go. Okay, you. Yeah, um, and one thing that we decided at our last thing yeah, is on the next bill that's going out, I am going to put on the bills that this is coming. Yeah. We'll follow up with a letter that's and you'll good. get a better time frame. That's good. Because so. I don't want to go to people's properties without knowing. <laughs> yeah, you know Bob's what? used to it. 
He's fine. <laughs> if the person doesn't contact you, you're still going on the property, though. If they don't answer your letter, or correct, you're still Our going. Our ordinance outlines that we are able to. Do right, so. of course, I remember that. But you're doing it. You're going. Yes, yeah. but we will try everything possible right. to reach out to the people beforehand. If that means that we need to post a letter to their door stating we would like communication with you, then we will do that. Right. Excuse me, Norma Jean Knowles. Um, are you just starting with the? Have you already done the commercials and you're all done with that, or or you? have to do that first and then the residential? We are finalizing our first group no. and um, a lot of that was our commercials and anything that we are aware of at this time and in the middle of doing our uh, group one list, uh, Clint decided to open his eyes and look at things in the, the billing software. <laughs> yeah, I already got Which inspected. Which created group two. I got a letter and I was inspected already. Yeah. Um, Jess, could you explain LIDs and why it's connected with an EMR? So the LID stands for Local Improvement District, and a 93 uh, 